Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. And this is me attempting max consecutive once, level three. And I would say this is treading along the path of a medium to hard kind of question. But uh, like, let, let's give it a go. I will explain the question quickly and I'll go through the walkthrough. So um, given a binary array, which means it just contains zero and ones, and integer k, return the maximum number of consecutive ones in an array if you can flip at most k zeros. So in this array, if we just flip two, if you're just allowed to flip two zeros, uh, are we able to get the maximum, uh, what is the maximum uh, number of consecutive ones that we can get? So in this case, they have uh, highlighted these two bits, these two zeros to be flipped, but it's up to us which zeros we can we want to flip. Like something more visually look uh, easier to look at, in my opinion, is this. Like if I just flip this zero and this zero, I get six as well. I get six ones. So how do we identify the opportunity? Like where do we, how do we get uh, this value? So um, before jump, jumping into coding it out and understanding, like uh, trying to write it, when faced with a situation like this, I recommend everyone to just first step, think of case study. Second step, think of the most brute force way of solving uh, any question. And as you're thinking in, of like uh, the most brute force method, the optimal solution will somehow hint itself out when thinking of the most brute force solution. So yeah, um, okay, let's think of the case studies first. Let's look at the help that they've given. So um, in this test case, we see that there's a three ones and three zeros, then four ones and a zero. So we can maybe identify a way to connect the most number of uh, contiguous ones. So that, that's something we can keep in mind, but just keep that in mind first. Another combination that we might see is uh, it starts with a zero and ends with a zero or something like that. If it starts and ends with a zero, we don't, we should probably not even look at them because having them part of the thing doesn't help us, right? So, uh, or maybe it does. So it's kind of complex. So we have thought of the different test cases now. Next, let's go into the brute force way of looking at it. So the most brute force way of solving this question, uh, in my opinion, would be to start with the largest window and see how many zeros are there. And if the number of zeros is lesser than k, or equal to k. That means you can just fill it up and that window size will be the answer that we return here. If the number of zeros, like in this case, it's four and it's larger than k, that means whatever tools that we have is insufficient to fill up this window. So we trim the size of the window by one. And if we slide this, there's two opportunities to slide here. In both opportunities, the number of zeros uh, overtake the number of k's. Like there are more zeros than k's. In that situation, we cannot proceed. So we reduce the length of the window again by one more. So the, the ideal case, I mean, the, the, the point in which we find the solution is when the window is six. In the first window, we don't get it because there's three zeros, but... Uh, k is two, so we, we don't get it. So we slide one by one, still three zeros, slide by another one, still three zeros, slide by another one, still three zeros, oh, sorry. Uh, still this thing. And we slide by one more, and now we have zeros, the number of zeros is two, and k is equal to two. Hence, these two can actually be flipped, and we will get the answer. I know the example that they've given is uh, this zero and this zero, but it doesn't matter. We can flip any zeros. They didn't restrict us on which zeros to flip. So yeah, like you can see that if we just, uh, at, at six window, if we flip two of the zeros, we get the answer. So, but even then, like I mentioned, this is the most brute force way of solving it. Why is it the most brute force way? Because it's very inefficient. Why is it inefficient? Because if you look at the time complexity, we are starting with the largest window, and we are slowly trimming down to uh, each and every window size. So firstly, uh, it is of 
n time complexity, like lengthwise. If there's more values, it'll be n side, n times. And for each window, we are going to be sliding across the whole thing. For the larger windows, we slide less. For the smaller windows, we will slide. There'll be a lot more combinations to check. So effectively, it is n times n, n squared, which would get ridiculous when the volume that we're looking at is like 10 to the power of 5. 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5, it's like 10 to the power of 10 plus. So it's, it's just bad. So this is not an efficient solution, but we have to, while doing the brute force bang, we need to ideate and think of what is the hint that it dropped. So the hint that it dropped to me when I was trying it is that if the window is, uh, like if the window is too, it has too many zeros, we can, we have to trim it. So what I'm thinking of is, is basically we're going to ideate a solution where we expand, uh, we expand further and we expand further until we see, until we find a way, like we we, we do a, a version of a sliding window, but this time we start with this and we keep going, we keep going. The So far, three is a good number to have. Three will be the maximum number of uh, consecutive ones so far, but we have the tools, which is K, K is equal to two. We have the tools at our disposal. So we scroll one more time. Uh, we can flip this. Now four is the maximum. We can flip this. Five is our maximum now. So going good. And we go to the next, but we don't have enough case to work with anymore. So what do we do? If we don't have enough case, we have to give up with this starting point and move by one. Let's start with this and keep track of this first. We still have three zeros it's still not sufficient for us to work with. Like there's just way too many zeros. So we have to skip one more, keep going. Still too many zeros, keep going, skip one, keep going, skip one, keep going because, okay, we, we can skip this and we can start stop with this. Okay, we have two zeros now and K, we have two Ks. So that is good enough for us to continue to add on, to look at the next item now. So two, let's add on one. Still two zeros, it seems like a good idea. Still two zeros, we can keep going. Still two zeros, we have two zero, two Ks. Like K is equal to two and we have two zeros, still works. We still have two zeros and K is equal to two, still works. And at this point, we beat the previous high score, which was five, and it's now at six. So the high score will now be changed to six and we will continue. And we will look at the next item which is if we add the next item, it is three zeros and it's not sustainable anymore. Three zeros is not sustainable. So we will uh, shrink it from the left side. Now it is two zeros and uh, two, uh, K is equal to two. So that is a, and we don't have anything else to scan beyond that. So we can just stop the program at this point because there's no point in like trying to shrink it even further. Like, yeah. So that way we have actually seen everything just once, but in a way uh, accounted for, like we terminated early, with the, we terminated the starting point early the moment we find the weakness. Like with the moment we found that this starting point cannot give us a longer uh, consecutive one any further, we just terminate and go to the next starting point, which is this. And if this doesn't work, we go to the next, we go to the next. And once we see that we can actually expand to the next one already, we can see the next one, then we go to the next one. So this, while in ideation might sound complex and uh, hard to execute, maybe some people figure it out better as a code. So I'll just go straight to the coding part. So how is it going to look like? Um, firstly, there'll be a left pointer and a maximum pointer, right? Not a pointer, like a variable that I'm instantiating. There's a left pointer and a maximum variable. And what I'm planning to do now is I need to see the whole thing. I'm going to find a way to see the whole thing, which is to a follow. So for right index and number in enumerate nums, I'm going to 
uh, he, I, I, I'm going to find a way to traverse the whole thing. So what am I actually doing? I need to first keep count of the zeros and ones. So for that, I'm going to use a dictionary and zero is zero and one is also zero so far because we haven't seen anything yet. And whatever value that I'm seeing, I will just plus one. Like if it's, if num is equal to zero, I will add one to zero. Like I'll add one to the count number of zeros. If the value, if the num is equal to one, it will add one to the counter over here. So that is that. After I add the values, while, like basically I want to do something like this. If the number of zero is, I'm just going to type in English. If the number of zero is larger than uh, k, there is no point in keeping the same starting point. Maybe I should just comment this, okay. There's no point in keeping the same starting point. So um, that's when we shift the starting point. But how do we wrap this into code? So for this, I'm going to use a while loop, while loop and ensure that while uh, dictionary zero is larger than k, like if it's equal to k, it's fine because you can just replace those two points and make that answer, like something like that. But if it is larger than k, then we need to change the starting point. And when we change the starting point, we don't want to recount the whole thing again, right? We just want to update the count as in like a dynamically. So while dictionary uh, zero is equal, while dictionary zero is greater than k, uh, we adapt, we modify the starting point. So the starting point, we increase by one. And uh, there's a reason why I'm keeping the right and left, uh, which will be, we will explain later, but let me just figure this out. The starting point is basically left. And uh, so yeah, left will be plus one because I'm shifting it towards the right. And whatever that I'm cutting out now, like if I, if I shift from here and I see this and I'm like, nope, there's too many zeros now. I need to change the starting point. I need to trim this out of the count. So I need to cut whatever this value was from the count. And that would be dict uh, nums left minus equals one. So nums left, sorry, I need to, yeah. Whatever the starting point was, I, I find the item and put into the dictionary and say minus one. Whatever that item was, I just minus one from that item, the count. And uh, dictionary, sorry, and left will get updated to the next one. So this way, <clears throat> uh, we will keep updating. We will change the starting point to left, and but the dictionary zero, like number of zeros, still remain the same. Three is larger than two, hence we'll keep going. Uh, we'll start to change it. Sh shift left to one more. Shift left one further, still three, three is not good enough for us. We need two or less. So we'll shift one more and now we will get two. The starting point will be here and we will now have a zero counter of two. And that's when we continue, we exit the loop and we can uh, see what is the maximum value right now. So how do we find the maximum? So maximum will be max of uh, right minus left plus one or itself. So let me explain, let me quickly explain what this is doing. Um, so when we first saw the five, uh, we basically for write, enum, enumerate, dictionary zero was not greater than K over here. Like as we were going through this, dictionary zero was zero. The number of zero is zero here. The number of zero is one here. The number of zero is two here. So all this while, this, we wouldn't even go into the while loop. And we don't go into the while loop 
we are just updating the max value by looking at the left, the starting point, and the right value, which is updating over here. The right value, as it sees more things, the right value will increase by one. So over here, the right value is zero. Right value is one. So right value is two. So let's say right value is two over here. Right is two and left is zero. Two minus zero is two, but the length is actually three. So to account for that difference is why we do right minus left plus one. So if this was the maximum at this point, as we are traversing through, we need to represent max to be three. And that's what happens over here. And when we go to this value, we still don't fail this condition. So we keep the same starting point and left and four, sorry, three minus one, sorry, three minus zero plus one, we'll get four, which is this four. And then we go here. Still, we don't go through this loop because the number of zeros is lesser than K. We can just replace them easily. So right value will be four minus zero plus one, which is five. And hence the running maximum right now would be five. The maximum, whatever the high score is five at this point. But the second we include the next item, we have three zeros now and three zero is not uh, smaller than K, smaller than equal to K. Hence we will run through this until we make the number of zeros lesser than K, lesser than equal to K. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So then at some point, at some point, we will run into this example. Like as we are expanding, we will stop here, right? Like we will see two zeros and two zeros can be replaced is functioning. So we will get to this stage and then that will be just two. We keep expanding the number of zeros stable, the number of zeros stable, number of zeros stable, number of zeros stable. And this, at this point, we would have seen six already. And even if we add to the, go to the next one, and if we go to the next one, the number of zeros is not stable anymore. And hence we had to change the starting point and we'll go here. But even then, the maximum number of uh, the maximum number of consecutive ones that we see will remain as six, which is this. So we just need to return max, and that will be the answer for us. So I think this video took much longer than my usual video, but yeah. Um, I just wanted to drive through the whole process about how to get the answer rather than just uh, like what is the answer. So yeah, this the answer is as expected. Uh, this is as well ten because we don't need to identify the exact point in which you flip. We just need to return the count of it. That's why a max is sufficient, like a right minus left plus one. Um, the right gets updated in the for loop, and the left gets updated if the starting point needs to be changed. And this is more time uh, efficient. This is more efficient in terms of time complexity wise because we don't traverse the whole thing many times. We just traverse the whole thing once. And as we are going through, we systematically and slowly upgrade ourselves. Uh, like changing the starting point or uh, the second we see that we have too many zeros in our current window, we just, we don't progress until we are in a better state. Like over here, the second we saw that we have more zeros than possible, we just change the starting point to see a new thing. And change the starting point again, change the starting point, change the starting point until we are okay to proceed. So that way we see all the combinations, all the best case combinations within uh, until we proceed to see the whole array. And that way we cover all bases and we get a correct and efficient solution by doing so. So let's submit this. and. Yeah, so this in terms of time complexity beats 65% of Python users and 77% of, in terms of memory. Uh, our memory wise, we are constant because we don't really create this thing and it's uh, it doesn't expand even if we have many things because it's a binary array. There's only a zero and a one. We just update the values inside. And uh, we have this. So it's, it's constant and uh, that's for our memory space. As for runtime, our time complexity is and for this, and uh, at worst case, uh, it'll just be a plus n sort of dynamic 
and even then it doesn't matter because uh we would have seen we, we will be seeing everything just once like each item that we see each item that we see will just be uh sorry this will be at most k yeah at most k so it'll be n plus k or n times k around that it's just not a lot uh n plus k so this is my best optimal solution for this problem uh if any of you have any suggestions or feedback or any different ways to approach this there's probably many other approaches uh do let me know if you don't understand my explanation do let me know as well so that i can maybe redo revisit this question so yeah that is my attempt and hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one thank you bye